This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show and Element 14. Windows 8, last week we showed you how to burn your own install disk and get your Metro on. That's that strange and wondrous tile interface. And uh, we promise to get more in depth this week. Joining us to geek out on Windows 8, Tested.com's Will Smith. Hi, I'm Will. Have you slept since Windows 8 came out? Yes. Many, oh, many nights. Oh, I was wondering, because you were... Do I look crazy? Do I have the crazy wild eyes? It's, you actually, you do. You went to the coffee shop before you came here. I in. haven't yet today. He may be talking fast. Brace yourselves. Sh should we talk about like Metro, the desktop disconnect? We actually, you finally found the shutdown budget. I found the shutdown button. It's on the login screen, which makes perfect sense. In the long tradition of start menu shutdown, why, why is it even there? I don't we, know. We should probably talk about why Metro is even there, right? In theory, you said I'm allowed to get facetious. It's too early. It's Windows 8 is yes. a year out. This is part of the long-standing Microsoft tradition of leaking early, leaking often, making it public, making the public pay for betas whenever possible. But this is like, you know, one Windows interface to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. I mean, this the, the one Windows everywhere. That's the concept. Yeah, That's the, the theory. The idea is same version of Windows running on the tablet, on the laptop, on the desktop. Mm -hmm. All of the places that you want to use a computer should be the same version of Windows. And that's what this Metro screen is. This is the new start menu for Windows on all those devices, except for your phone. And it's interesting what's, or I should say interesting slash potentially terrifying, it's kind of like Windows 8 on top of Windows 7. Metro, they're, sa they're already saying is Metro applications, like that Metro, can we show the desktop again really quickly? The Metro desktop, right, the Metro interface, the Metro start page, whatever the heck we're going to end up calling this, this is going to be, the only way to load applications on this is going to be Apple style through a Microsoft store. You can't just load anything willy-nilly on the Metro desktop. Or at least we don't know how to do that so far. Right. Maybe that there's like an APK type situation, like there's an Android where you can sideload stuff in. Pretty sure Microsoft Probably told not. Microsoft could change their mind, but they, yeah. they seem to, to they seem to be intimating that, that it was going to be through that's a, the preferred a store. That, method, that's how, that's what they want to yeah. do. Well, they're not taking money from this, so they right. really just want to get a. The thing that they say is that they want a safer, more secure way for people like my mom and dad to install applications without having to go to random websites and downloading stuff from, you know, Czech Republic bad <laughs> places and, and making mistakes that I have to come fix. So okay. I'm excited about that. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Why kind of? Well, because, you know, the, the store, the Apple App Store has been really good in some right. ways, but really bad in that, it, you know, what Steve Apple doesn't want Steve says that that's a yeah, naughty exactly. application, and Steve says you can't download it on his iOS. Uh-uh-uh. <laughs> but, but I am kind of interested in what they're doing with the tablet side of this, because they, they handed out to developers at Build right. a, a Samsung Series 7 Slate right. PC, basically a dual-core Core i5, uh, running Windows 8, obviously, mm -hmm. and that experience was much better than I was expecting from a desktop, uh, you know, desktop, right. desktop form factor processor. Well, that that is essentially a desktop stuffed into a tablet. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. It's a With glimpse the, into the future, right? right? Well, and it's interesting because because you also have a, a split going on that. that Microsoft is embracing the ARM processor. They are creating an entirely different flavor of Windows with the same interface to run on the ARM processor, but that means that there are going to be applications that will run on the Intel stuff yeah. that will not run on the, the ARM stuff. For example, Windows 2010 is not going to run on ARM. That yes. may not be a painful okay. situation for most people. Uh, yeah, so so uh, one of the things that they're doing is, it, depending on which language developers write the apps in, so mm -hmm. if they write uh, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript apps, obviously those will run on ARM and mm -hmm. Windows, Windows uh, and x86 as well. Uh, same thing for C Sharp. Uh, C++ plus and right. C++ plus plus and C apps obviously have to be compiled differently for different processes and right. architectures. Um, that stuff is kind of weird. I think that for the most part, most pe normal people won't ever have to know that that kind of stuff. I think you'll just load up the store and you'll see the apps that work and see the apps that don't work. The other thing though is that there's a full-blown real Windows 7 desktop underneath right. the Metro store. <laughs> Which you can kind of get to by, where where'd the button go? Uh, there's a giant, I think my virtual machine. Now th this performance is not <laughs> uh, uh, what you would come to expect from running on native code. I'm running in a virtual machine. It actually runs pretty well here. if you run on a Core i5 and a Core i7. <laughs> While you relaunch your virtual I'm machine. <laughs> crash the whole computer. Perhaps we'll go to the dozens of emails and tweets. Uh, we actually had a whole bunch of, of tweets and email questions. Uh, Dave writes in with a question uh, with several people. Actually, primarily Roger has been wondering about. He says, I was wondering if I don't have a touch screen, can I use the Xbox Connect with Windows 8 to control the PC without touching it? 
That is a lovely thought, isn't it? It is a lovely thought, right? Because actually, we've got a, there were a whole bunch of tweets and questions around that. Basically, like, do I need a touch screen to use Windows 8? Minority Report. I Everybody know. wants Minority Report. Everybody wants Minority Report. I don't think this is a Minority Report interface. It is a step in that direction. I think what's going to happen is that uh, third-party mm -hmm. developers will hack that kind of stuff in. Microsoft's not going to. Right. They're not. That's not part of their five-year plan. That makes sense. Because also Connect is kind of a 10-yard interface, not a 10-inch you, you don't want to be in front of a tablet trying to swipe and stuff like that. Uh, interesting, there are some multi-touch devices coming out for Windows. Logitech has that trackpad, the multi-touch right. tra trackpad. I don't know how that works with Windows 8, but I know it does work with the Windows 7 multi-touch stuff. Which brings us right to at Steed, who writes in at Patrick Norton, does Windows 8 work with large touch devices like the Wacom Touch tablets and Apple's Magic Trackpad? tablet in this at my desk. You know, I haven't had a chance. We don't have any Wacom tablets in house, mm -hmm. and we don't have any of the the Magic tablets from Microsoft from Apple. You don't. You don't. I use one of those every day. You do? I'm a big fan. You're the only person I know who's ever owned one of those. We we bought a bunch of them at the office when. Uh, when Did you try came. it out with Windows 8? Uh, it doesn't work with Windows 8 as of right now. Okay. It's hard to actually. There's no base level drivers for the mm -hmm. Apple stuff. I don't know about the Wacom, although traditionally they've kind of lagged in OS support uh, with their with their hardware. We, we have one of those bamboos someplace. I can plug it in and try it out. Maybe. We'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> J.R. Johnstone tweets, still running Windows XP. Should I make the transition to 7 or wait until Windows 8 is released? Oh. Uh, it's a year before Windows 8 is coming out, and chances are your machine is long in the tooth at this point. Unless you're running a, you know. I, Unless you built a machine during the Vista period and, right. and just put XP on it to be, uh, to be that guy, probably it's OK to upgrade now. Yeah. If you're the kind of guy who doesn't upgrade the OS every four or five years, I, I think Windows I like 7 is Windows awesome. 7. I like Windows 7 a lot. I use it as my main desktop OS. I, I, right. It's good. Or no reason not to buy that. Wait till Windows 8 ships and buy a cheap version of Windows 7 when it gets really cheap and Windows 8 comes out. Walt wants to know, can I dump all the fluff stuff so that the start page is just the application groups I use? Hence, when I'm doing my music composition, I want all my audio and music software in one group for easy, quick access with a single click from the bottom app bar. When I'm doing video editing, I want the video, image, and specific audio software all down on the bottom app bar. When I'm working on, I think we have a theme here, SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD modeling, I want my other image and support programs I tend to use for presentations of the 3D models down on the bottom app bar. I want to create a custom one-click bottom app bar for each job type and have all the other stuff in a pop-up list for all of the applications on the PC. You, you, I don't know how to do that on Windows. You came and did yeah. that on OS X, because you'd kind of think that that would work that way with spaces, but it right. doesn't. Um, it sounds like something maybe Stardock might have a solution for, but I, I was going to say that sounds third party. To yeah, me. that sounds profoundly third party to me because I think Windows pretty much, or Microsoft pretty much wants this standard look. It's it's like Windows Phone. It's like Windows Tablet. Well, one thing that they have done with the new uh, with Windows 8 and the developer preview for multi monitor support right. is they've added. Uh, the ability to break out the applications by window, kind of like it w works with Linux, actually, uh, so that you can so that only the windows that are open on your monitor one will show on the taskbar for monitor one, and then there's a separate taskbar for monitor two that shows only the windows that are open on monitor two. Andrew apparently is not a fan of the new UI. He writes in, I found the Metro interface gets in the way of accomplishing tasks on the desktop. So I have two questions for Will. One, is there a way to turn off the Metro interface? Two, if there is no way to turn off Metro, is Microsoft planning on making that a feature in a future build? I'm really curious because I think the Metro interface is great for a tablet, but not so much for a desktop computer. Andrew. I agree with Andrew completely. Do you agree with Andrew completely because you haven't just adopted to the new Metro style user interface and its ease of use, it, or because it actually, I'm, I'm not, I can't even play devil's advocate. It's a nightmare to use with a mouse. I, you know, it's it's a lot. Of, part of me says it is wildly too early to, to say because you right. know, like you said, a year, fourteen the months, prudent probably tech out. analyst yes. says it is too early. I, I find it offensive when I have a machine hooked up to a thirty-inch monitor that I have these full screen apps. Right. And, and I can't do anything but full screen. Right. Uh, the official Microsoft answer, because I asked actually mm -hmm. uh, one, of their, one of their senior product managers while I, while I was at Build, is that this is the start menu replacement. There will be no start menu. Whoa. However, they also followed that up with, it's still really early. So we're listening to feedback. So when our corporate, yeah. when our corporate customers push back on this really, really hard. Yeah, I can't imagine it's going to go well at, at, at IBM or right. you know, Fortune 500 companies. Right. And they're like, well, but my start menu is, and right. the all I don't know what to click. Um, it, 
there's already a third party hack mm -hmm. to add uh, to to remove the start menu, the start screen rather, the metro, the start metro screen. start screen from the from the developer build. I don't know what what it does with start menu or app mm -hmm. launching. I, it, it weirds me out to switch. It feels right now like the desktop, the traditional desktop, and the metro style start screen are two different OSs that just happen Being to be running on the same together. box. Yeah, I, my hunch is it seems like the Windows Seven, the traditional desktop side, hasn't seen a whole lot of work yet, or they're not showing what they've done to it. My hunch is that there'll be a little bit better integration between the two when they actually get to beta, which should be like yeah. CES timeframe in oh, January. So I, this this smells like one of those things where it's going to be two or three massive releases that yeah. make major changes in the interface yeah. and how it feels. Well, and the other thing that's important to remember is when they did the same release for Windows Seven at the Professional Developer Conference, which was what they used to call Build before it was called build, mm -hmm. uh, they hadn't done any of the new UI stuff. So it was essentially Vista desktop, Vista start screen, Vista uh, start menu, all that right. stuff. All the window Chrome and UI stuff was Vista. It just had a different kernel so developers could test against it. Obviously, that doesn't work with Metro because they have to be able to do the new apps and understand how the full screen stuff works and all that. I would expect <laughs> to see more changes on the desktop side between which, now and Which then. came first, the app or the interface? I don't <laughs> At Bees and Writes in, I use an IBM Model M keyboard. Is Windows 8 usable without a Windows key? If not, can I map it and how? Did we mention too early? <laughs> yeah, don't don't use this. <laughs> don't use this for work. It's a bad idea to use this for work. Right. I don't know how you would use it without a Windows key though, because it's hard to switch back and forth. But there's no there's no metro. Well, there is a the, what used to be the Windows button that opened right. Start menu now takes you to the Start screen. So theoretically, in theory, you Patrick, could kind of mouse your way through. You it. could mouse your way through it. I don't think that would be good. Perhaps launching virtual. Yeah, it would be a nightmare. Uh, Fine. <laughs> one, one thing that I do love is if you mash the Windows key and type the name of the app you want to launch, right. it still launches whether it's a desktop app or a Metro app. So That's it's just cool. like you know, it's, if you're the guy that uses the search to launch apps, like I always do. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Uh, that works perfectly. Stab, WordPad, go. Exactly. Finally, Gabrielle emailed in asking, I have a three-year-old laptop running Windows Vista. I'm hearing a lot of things about Windows 8, and from what I'm understanding, its system requirements are actually less than Windows 7. Is this true? Will I be able to install Windows 8 on my older laptop? Wow, was this sent in by Microsoft PR? <laughs> uh, they actually are uh, answering, they, they, the same min spec mm -hmm. uh, as Windows 7, so that means anything that runs Windows 7 will probably run this, and I would guess a little bit better. Right. Uh, they actually decreased, I think, the supported resolutions one notch for lower end netbooks and stuff like that. Something that actually worked, but they didn't actually officially support support. So, so your, your aging Atom processor on your aging yeah. first or second generation netbook has a has a chance. I, I would say if it runs Windows 7, it should run Windows 8. Uh, the one the one min spec thing that you do need to be aware of is if your monitor isn't 1366 by 768, you can't do the one third, two thirds split on Metro apps. Oh. So the only way you can run two Metro apps at once won't work on this laptop right here. Yeah, that that I I I want to run four apps simultaneously and be able to sort of flip I between. I don't know how I feel about full screen apps on on my Windows, but we'll see. Yeah. Too soon to say. Yeah, I, I I perhaps will enjoy it. I'll judge in January when they release the beta. And he's going to judge hard. <laughs> What's coming up? Obviously, CES coverage is coming up. Well, that's in that's a few months away. I don't want to think about that What's yet. What's coming up next week? Uh, What's coming got, up this week? We've got a ton of great how tos and stuff every week. Uh, all the Windows 8 coverage. There's in depth. We did a live like 45 minute long quick look of the developer build. So if you want to see what it looks like without having to you know, potentially ruin one of your machines, uh, we'll walk you through that whole thing and you can go real deep and see what control panels and all that stuff look like. Tested.com is the website. Will Smith and his crew is over there pumping out some really cool stuff. And are, are you still doing 3D models every Friday? Every Friday, uh, MakerBot mystery object. I don't think we've missed one in a few months. Uh, sometimes, you know, the MakerBot, a little finicky it turns out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so and then we also have a ton of great Windows 8 coverage. I spent a lot of hands-on time with both the Samsung Slate mm -hmm. and with the desktop PC. We've got full write-ups on that stuff. And like a 45-minute, if you want to go real deep with the OS without having to install it yourself, we have a video for that. Go there for the Windows 8 coverage. Stay there through Friday and find out what random mystery object will show up. What time does that happen on Fridays? Yeah, Friday in the morning. Friday sometime. Yeah, it'll be up when you're up. <laughs> At least uh, you're on the West Coast. <laughs> More Techzilla coming up right up. But before we do that, let's thank one of our sponsors, The Ben Heck Show. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash TBHS. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben runs into Hack 5's Darren Kitchen at Maker Faire, and it gets ugly. They challenge each other to a mod-off. 
Ben's assistant Allison spills her quesadillas on Ben's floor and Ben builds a retro 30s radio inspired transforming portable land computer. It's amazing. Stay tuned to element14.com slash TBHS to find out how you can enter to win Ben's latest build from his show. Thank you.